Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of January 18, 2021. We had four topics this week, and one of them is actually kind of a big deal. We had our first automated beyond visual line of sight flight. I'm going to talk about what that means and, and kind of what happened. I'm going to talk about a flying Cadillac, <laughs> kind of an interesting article I read. And I have a drones for good story that I want to talk about, which I think is really cool. Happens quite a bit, actually, but I wanted to mention it anyway. And then uh, the last thing is an important Pilot Institute course update. So we'll talk about this as well. So let's get started. OK, the first thing this week is the first automated beyond visual line of sight approval was granted this week to a company called American Robotics, uh, granted by the FAA. Now, we've seen beyond visual line of sight flights. And, and if you follow me, if you've been following me for a while, last year and a year before, we talked about how now you could fly beyond visual line of sight without having to use observers. But always, there was always somebody in control of the UAS. Um, if you are interested in all of this and you're interested in UTM, you've heard me say this word before, unmanned traffic management. In UTM, there's a concept of allowing beyond visual line of sight flights with a, more than likely having a, a drone that is equipped with sense and avoid technology because you can't fly out there autonomously without having to uh, avoid other aircraft that are in the area. So this company managed to have, they have a drone called the Scout and uh, the drone is equipped with a, a technology that has sense and avoid. And so that's kind of the key right here to this kind of approval where you're going to be able to fly beyond visual line of sight without having an actual operator flying the the UAS. Now, if you ask me how I feel about this, obviously, um, I love flying my drone. I love piloting my drone. And I think this is kind of game changing, not necessarily in a good way. Uh, there are some things that uh, this is going to take the job away from a pilot. So um, good news with some kind of a caveat, I guess. Uh, we, knew it, we know it's coming. We know that th these kind of operations are coming where um, as much automation is going to be put into place so that companies that are using the drones can make more profit. So uh, it, is, uh, it is part of the, 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 the world that we live in, I should say. Uh, the UAS itself, like I said, is called a Scout. It's housed in a, a waterproof base station that can actually charge the drone, collect the data, process the data, and then submit it to where it needs to go. Um, it's basically designed for several industries. We have the energy industry, the infrastructure industry doing inspections, I'm going to guess, in the future. The agriculture industry, where you'll be able to deploy the drone, fly autonomously in areas where work needs to be done or data, ne data needs to be collected. And then uh, in the security market as well. So um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of torn uh, with uh, this kind of technology becoming available. Okay, next step, uh, next story, the flying Cadillac. Uh, GM unveiled their concept of a uh, Cadillac flying car, and uh, that's going to be a passenger car. That's what we call a, uh, a eVTOL, electronic ver vertical takeoff and landing uh, device. And uh, eVTOLs, you know, you may heard, you may have heard urban air mobility, UAM. UAM has been growing in the last few years, and uh, uh, and we're starting to see flying prototypes. Now, the one right here is not a flying prototype. It looks like it's just an idea. Uh, I think it's actually quite ugly if you see the picture right here, but that's just personal taste. Um, we have... Um we have companies in China, the Middle East, that have been doing test flights. A company like Ehang or uh, Velopter. I've talked about Velopter before. They, they design really large drones. And, um, and these companies are designing these, these drones of the future. Air taxi is another word that you might hear. So uh, the Cadillac GM is not the first company to do this. They're partnering with a drone taxi company that's going to uh, design and, and kind of deal with all of this for them. Uh, but I think it's uh, it's interesting. This is something that we're definitely going to see uh, in the next, hard to put a number on this, 10 years, 15 years in large cities where you'll be able to call uh, an Uber. And instead of having a car show up, you'll have uh, a flying Cadillac or you'll have a, a flying car. You know, we've been talking about flying cars ever since I remember, ever since I can speak, people have been talking about flying cars. And uh, and it's it looks like it's finally happening. So that's kind of a, an interesting thing. Um, a drones for good story, and uh, this one is in Florida, Port St. Lucie. The police department get a call that uh, two kids had gone uh, missing and uh, probably wandered 
off the house without the parents, not probably actually, uh, wandered off the house without the, parent, the parents noticing. And the, they had a Mavic uh, 2 zoom that they use at the police department. So the pilot and the visual observer took off, searched the area, and then found out that the kids were near a lake and uh, sent the parents over there. They kept an eye on the kids until the parents came over and picked them up. So drones for good. That's, uh, that's always good to hear a story like this where uh, drones are used to save lives or to find kids, especially when kids are involved, obviously. Uh, the last thing I have for you this week is a big update from Pilot Institute in our course. As you know, new regulation went in place. I'm happy to say that after several weeks of hard work, we've re-recorded videos, we've updated the course, and now we have a, f a course that's fully compliant for the new exam that's coming out on March 1 of 2021. So if you're a student in the course right now, you have an email that details all of the things that we've done to the course and where you can find all the new information. But essentially we have new chapters for regulation, night operation, uh, operation over people, which is part of the regulation, uh, operation over human beings, and then um, uh, operation over people and human beings. That's the same thing. Uh, operation over human beings and operation over moving vehicles, and then on the recurrent training as well. So we've added dozens of new questions to our exam in the quizzes, in the final exam, and it's ready. And, uh, and I'm actually excited because I think we're pretty much the first company to do this, uh, the first training company to do this. So uh, the course is fully compliant. You can still take the old exam until March 1st. You don't really have an option, quite frankly. Uh, so you can still train. We still have the older regulation available as well, uh, but everything is in there. Also, in addition, we've actually added some cool new features uh, in the airspace section, in the weather section. We've re-recorded some of these videos to make them even better uh, based on your feedback, based on questions questions that we get on a regular basis and uh, and it seems like it's working because we're uh, the, the students are responding really well to all the changes so uh, make sure that you head out and check those out if you're not a student yet there's a link down in here obviously um, I, I, I don't I'm not I'm not a good salesman I don't like being a salesman especially during the news update this is not what this uh, news update is designed for it's designed to help you stay up to date if you're a student if you're not a student it doesn't really matter uh, we love having you and we love having the conversation so um, I actually just added another video this morning our uh, traffic pattern has been uh, updated as well so if you're a student make sure you go check it out we get some cool graphics in there going on right now so that's it that's all i have uh we've got some snow coming in the forecast here in prescott now a lot of people prescott is in arizona a lot of people think that we live in the desert uh, i don't actually I have mountains all around me uh, i'm at five my house is at 5500 feet elevation and we've got some snow expected for four days in a row uh, we get uh, we get about well, I'd say a week on average of snow every year around here. Uh, temperatures drop and uh, and then we enjoy it for a while and then it disappears because it gets really sunny around here. So um, we'll have some cool footage hopefully of the snow. Uh, we've got some really cool Drone Busters episodes uh, that are coming up and that we're going to be filming in the next couple of weeks. So stay posted. If you're not if you're not following us yet on, on YouTube, make sure you click the little follow button right here and then, uh, and then you'll get the updates when the video gets posted. So all right. Promise, this is all I have now. You guys fly safe and then I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.